I want to share with you a story that shook me. And it shook the people who were there at the moment that this happened. Approximately seven years ago in Ireland, the university students there, the, uh, the boys actually specifically, the men, they had a hiking survivalist type of camp or retreat in which they were trying to live off of the basic resources of nature. This was a really rough camp and they never did this again. As they were hiking the mountains, one of the brothers, I think 20 or 21 years old, he slipped and when he fell, something punctured his body and he started bleeding out. Now he's bleeding out, they're in the middle of nowhere and they don't know what to do. None of them are practiced physicians, none of them are certified to do anything. All they did was, as he's on the ground, they started putting pressure on the wound. And the one who's saying this to me, and he's almost crying as he's relaying this story, he said, we told him everything will be okay, don't worry. He's bleeding out. You have no cell phone reception. You have nothing, nobody to help you. And as he's bleeding out and they're telling him, they're surrounding him, telling him everything will be okay. The one who's saying this to me said, I started worrying, what if this guy died right now? What if he actually dies? So he said, just in case I told him to say, La ilaha illallah. A phrase that for you and I right now, you can say so lightly your lips don't have to move. La ilaha illallah. I know like half of you just tried it. La ilaha illallah. The phrase of salvation. The phrase of happiness and success. The phrase that the Prophet wasallam and the messengers worked for. So you and I could say it today. La ilaha illallah. They told him, say La ilaha illallah. He did not respond. He said, can you hear us? He said, I can hear you. He said, just in case, say La ilaha illallah. No response. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Say La ilaha illallah. Why are you not saying La ilaha illallah? He remains silent for a moment and then finally he opens his mouth and he says, for the last six months when I was alone in private, I did not pray a single prayer to Allah. And then he died. May Allah have mercy on him and use him as a lesson for everyone else. All his friends, his clique, his buddies, they started crying. Some of them said later on they struggled with these similar struggles. They struggled with other struggles. That moment was vivid. Why? Because you will die upon what you lived upon. And you'll be resurrected upon what you died upon. As the Prophet ﷺ informed us. How can you and I put in the effort today and never lose hope so that at the moment our souls are departing from our bodies, we are able to say La ilaha illallah in a very powerful way, in a very clear way. Not so others can witness it, but for ourselves. Because La ilaha illallah at the moment of death is something that you have to pay for. It's not free. Otherwise everyone would do it. It's something you have to live by. And it's something that causes us and requires us to exemplify La ilaha illallah throughout our lives by never giving up on returning to Allah, by never losing hope in the mercy of Allah, by always trying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not necessarily judge you based on your results, but He will judge you based on your sincerity and your efforts. How bad do you want to return to Allah and what are you willing to do about it? How bad do you want to say La ilaha illallah and what are you willing to live by to reach that point? Because the only thing all of mankind will agree upon it's not death and taxes. Some countries don't have taxes. The only thing that all of mankind will agree upon is death. Every one of us knows that eventually one day we'll depart from this world. It's not a sad thought. And it's not a thought that should cause us to be gloomy or depressed or stagnant in our actions. Death is a thought that should get us to act more productively today. Death is a thought that should get us to be more grateful for the blessings that we have and to use those blessings in ways that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want a good ending in this world, always return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sooner than later. Never procrastinate your return to Allah. Allah is always waiting for you and I. And He is the most loving, the most forgiving, the ever living. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most gracious. His mercy cannot be limited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran of the type of person Reflect on this scenario. In Surah Al-Mu'minun verse 99, Allah tells us of a scenario of a man who dies and he's asking to come back to this life. And Allah is one of the most frightening verses to read because we reflect on the reality that people are passing away all around us. Perhaps several hundred around the world every few seconds. Are we learning lessons from the people that we bury? Are we learning lessons from the janazas that we attend, from the Facebook posts about people who have passed away? Are we changing anything in our lives? Or have we become adapted and adjusted to the way of life that we're exemplifying? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, Hatta <laughs> 
So when a person passes away, he says to his Lord, Rabbi Rji'oon, my Lord, allow me to go back. Why? So I can do something good with what I left behind. So I can perfect one last prayer. Ya Allah, let us go back so we can ask people for forgiveness since we've wronged so many people. Ya Allah, let us go back so we can leave matters on a good note with our parents, with our spouses, with our children, with our neighbors, with people who have a right upon us. Ya Allah, let us go back so we can use our wealth in ways that are pleasing to you. Ya Allah, let us go back for one last chance, one last opportunity to really exemplify La ilaha illallah, to really return to you in a sincere return in a sincere repentance. We all have blessings and the greatest blessing that you have is that your heart is beating right now and that you have the ability at any moment to simply say, Ya Allah, forgive me. Ya Allah, I return to you. Ya Allah, help me. Ya Allah, guide me. Ya Allah, give me more strength and dedication to your faith. The dua we make after every prayer or should be making after every prayer. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Oh Allah, help me to worship you to praise you and to remember you in the best of manners. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who live in such a state and die upon such a state.